like they eat they wait for each one of, and they're in a a certain order baby second horse following mama good morning so it's the next day we uh, did our laundry and then went and got some grocery shopping done I'm on a shaky table so we're leaving my note my not uh, North Dakota and we're headed to Medora South Dakota hmm we're gonna be visiting a national park from there I can't remember if it's North Dakota or South Dakota forgive me anyway the weather girl today says it's going to be windy enough for your hair to stick to your chapstick. That's how they describe the wind. Whether your trash can will be knocked over or your hair will stick to your chapstick. I like it. Yeah. So we're hitting the road four hours to Medora. And that's it. I don't think we have any stops along the way. But let's hope our hair doesn't stick to our chapstick today good morning Christy Jimbo and the dog here so it's the next day we're at the Medora campground we're leaving it right now to go to Theodore Roosevelt National Park the entrance is at the north entrance is right here south, south entrance sorry and um, so we're gonna go check it out it's named after the president Theodore Roosevelt because he liked to hunt here he had a little cabin here hopefully we'll get to go check that out and this road is very bumpy so forgive my bumpies and we're here good morning folks how we did today good morning I'll send any maps for us this morning um yes please Center opens at nine in the park. We never close. Head on in. Thank Good you. Our first critter sighting. Wild horses. Where is it? There it is. There's one. And there's two more over there. Look like they're coming this way. Does the dog want to see them? Wild horses. Next critter sighting is prairie dogs. This park is filled with them. There's probably millions here. The dog likes them too? Of course he does. And even more on the other side of the road. We haven't even reached Big Prairie Dog Town or Prairie Dog Town. It's not Big Prairie Dog. All right. They're everywhere. All you can see there's their little rump sticking up. Every once in a while they pop up. What a pretty landscape, huh? Okay, one could hope if we see patties that size that we can see what makes patties that size. Yikes. I'm trying to get close to one of these prairie dogs without stepping on the poop. I've heard that they are pretty friendly out here. And there's one of their holes. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. I don't think that works. But they're all over the place and there are some deer or pronghorn out there, not sure, or pronghorn deer. Actually, they're more related to a rat than they are deer, aren't they? <laughs> pronghorn are. Hi. Jimbo just read that they occupy 2% of the park. 
I believe it. That's all we keep seeing is prairie dogs. Stopped at the Boy Court Overlook. This is the best spot to see the Badlands. The scenic loop that we're on has some damage on it, and it's not a loop at the moment. We have to turn around and come back on the same scenic drive. So, this is the last overlook. Another wild horse. And before you ask me, how do I know it's wild? Well, that's because that's what they told me. I'm not lifting his feet up to find out if he's wearing shoes. Or her. He looks like he's got boo-boos on his side. He sure is pretty. Back leg looks mm -hmm. Oh, it's a boy. <laughs> Gulliver, look at the horse. He sees it. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out the dang window. I can't even see him. <laughs> Is that your friend? <sighs> bye bye, horse. Okay, we're on the scenic loop in the national park here, and we're about to have to turn around. Told you there was road damage up ahead. Um, so we're turning around, but I wanted to explain that this national park is split up into three units. The first unit is the north unit, then there's Elkhorn Ranch, and then there is the south unit, and the south unit is where we have come in, and Jimbo's pointing something out, horse so I need... Oh, there. there's a wild horse way over there. You're not going to be able to see it. Two of them. He spots all the critters from afar. He's got better eyes than I do. He's got them eagle eyes. <laughs> So three parts, we're in the south unit. We're gonna go to Elkhorn Ranch. You can reach Elkhorn Ranch from here, and I think you can reach it from the north unit, but it's like a back road thing, but you can't reach each unit from, you can't reach the north unit from the south unit. So we'll visit this one today. We've got a few days here, and uh, we'll visit the north unit to maybe tomorrow. We're going to continue to look for critters here. To the Lakota, this land is Mako Sika, meaning bad land or bad earth. French fur trappers call it Le Mauvais Ter uh, Traverser. That's my French. Meaning the bad lands to cross. Anyone who has experienced the Badlands understands exactly how this place earned its name. I don't think necessarily that it's because nothing grows here, but I right, maybe maybe it does have a tough time growing things, but to travel across these lands is pretty treacherous. During the winter times when it's 40 below, it's pretty unforgiving. <laughs> So these are the Badlands. We've reached the road closure. It's not the only national park with uh, road closures. Not even the only one that we're going to visit. But yeah, we have to turn around on this loop. I swear all the bison are probably hanging out just on the other side of here. So we can't see them meanies 
All right, let's go back through the loop. No shortage of wild horses though. Absolutely. Look at the beauties. Oh, they're having a good old time. The dog is shaking the whole car. How fun to be wild. They're babies. Oh, look, they're all going to climb the mountain now. They decided their order. <gasps> oh, my goodness gracious. Little baby. Dog is a spaz. There they are, stop. Look at them. They're climbing the mountain. Look at them. Oh. How neat. Like they eat, they wait for each one of, and they're in a, a certain order. Baby second horse following mama. They better be careful. They all wait and regroup and then go some more. I didn't know we were going to see so many wild horses here. And again, I know they're wild because the park information <laughs> says there's wild horses in here. Again, not checking shoes. You can hear them clopping. going all the way up. Finally found the cow patty makers. Oh, they're not cow patties at all, are they? They're bison patties. Ooh, it smells like, oh, we're right by the coal, coal vein. Right fire. here, coal fire vein. Coal vein fire. Thank you, Jimbo. Coal vein fire. Can't really see anything on it, but there's smoke rising from underneath. And now that hill is blocking the bison. Man, we'll see some more, don't worry. We'll see the sign, coal vein fire ahead, do not report bison are right over there on the other side of that hill. We're going to take this East River Road Park Boundary one mile. It's a dirt road. Maybe it'll take us to Elkhorn Ranch. The map does not say it does, but sometimes they leave things off maps because they don't want you to come in the back entrance. Maybe this is like the old east entrance. Actually, we did stop at a spot that said it was the east old east entrance, but I don't know. Maybe it all loops together. We shall see. You never know if you don't check it out. But look at this view. This park is really pretty. So it turns out it's an old farm road. Doesn't take you anywhere. Well, like an hour and a half until you get somewhere. 
unless you want to go to somebody's farm but look at these views it's beautiful back here and we have it all to ourselves it's pretty cool but we're going to go back through into the park and head to the beginning again Pronghorn deer. No, they're not deer. Stop it. Pronghorn. I don't know how well focused that is because I went to the max. They are fat. They eat well. They got a whole village up underneath here, so they call this a prairie dog town. Look at them. So cute. Oh, there goes the dog. Bye-bye, prairie dog. And all you little friends, too. Butterflies. Pronghorn out there. Okay, so there's no road through to Elkhorn Ranch. There is a hiking trail, and I think it's like... 26 miles from one end from south end to the Elkhorn Ranch and it's 44 mile hike from the north unit to the Elkhorn Ranch that's more hiking than I want to do you want to do any kind of hiking like that mm -hmm. okay East Valley Ranch. It was a dude ranch at one point. It was a uh, headquarters at one point. It was a couple of things. Right now it's just a horseback riding place, but as we pulled into the place, we found bison out in the field. We got Mr. Mischievous over here standing on the fence. There's horse over there, and there's little stable area because you can rent them to go horseback riding that's pretty neat watch as you walk in there's crickets everywhere grasshoppers sorry grasshoppers these horses are property of the national park you see the grasshoppers they're so funny How does it feel to be owned by the government? Government. So yeah, this place is a whole complex. Can't imagine the whole ranch life out here back in the day. There's a couple of old buildings here. Well, we're always distracted by the critters. There's the bison way out there. She could smell the sweet air. Oh, it smells so good. I don't know what it is in the air here. Jimbo says it's nature. <laughs> bye bye, bison. We got lucky. Look at that. What a view. Well, that's a postcard right there. This is the overlook of Medora. We're, there's our campground right there. We're still in the National Park. That's how close we are 
to the national park. Oh, hey, Jeep, that's our neighbor right there. <laughs> So there's a ranger over there telling stories, but uh, what I do know is that Theodore Roosevelt bought this cabin in 1883 after he had come here to this area and to hunt bison, and he enjoyed it so much that he bought this cabin for $14,000 in 1883, and uh, he just used it as a hunting location, but then his wife and his mother died on February 14th, 1884. I'm not sure why they both died on the same day. Maybe I'll find out when we go inside the visitor center. But when they died, he came up here for some solitude and to heal. They did have three children. I guess he left them with family or a nanny or something. And so he spent a little while up here healing and uh, went back and took care of his kids. And he became president, our 26th president, in 1901. And that was because the president before him was assassinated. So at 43, he became president, our 26th president. And he was president for all eight years until 1909. Pretty neat. We're going to go inside this visitor center. I think it has a museum inside. Wow, look at the size of those antlers. Oh, Jimbo and I have still yet to see a moose. Theodore Roosevelt's 1876 Winchester 40 to 60 rifle. His family referred to it as his ranch gun. And there, triple barrel rifle. 1877 triple barrel Baker rifle. Two 12 gauge shotgun barrels. Wow, 1876 Winchester, 50 to 95 rifles. Is that you, Pelican Pete? Nice Teddy Roosevelt on a horse. Elkhorn Ranch, that's where we're gonna go. He had built several, I guess, that was the second ranch. And he hired some guys to work it. Side saddle and group Mrs. Sewell used. Huh. Mrs. Sewell. Bill Sewell and what was the other guy's name? Were the ones he hired to take care of Elkhorn Ranch. A handkerchief he wore during one of his campaign articles. The undershirt he wore. And what's really cold? 30 below. <laughs> That's really cold. Wow. burning stove in the center of the room and heat up the whole room. Food and warmth. 
Yes, it's kitchen, right? So, oh, look at that bedding. Traveling trunk. says TR on it. I don't know if you can see it. Crazy. Look, they're all over the place. Yikes. They're harmless to me. I don't know what they do to the crop. Those are the locals. Gulliver, come here. Come on. Silly, goofy dog. I think he likes them. Landed in my hair. 